This is Tiger Cats post game on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Difficult lessons learned by your Hamilton Tiger Cats. 29 to 14, the final. In the big smoke, Argonauts improving to 12 and 1. Tiger Cats dropping to 6 and 8. Bubba O'Neill along with Mike Daly here for Tiger Cats post game. And uh, a little bit of a tough learning lesson, but what I will say, and I think I will present it to Coach O this way, Mike Daly, is the fact that this defense stepped up in the second half and made it, I would think, interesting might be the word. Yeah, did they ever? I mean, they had uh, four two and outs, four two and outs and an interception in the second half. They gave up that one touchdown, but that was after the interception that went McManus had. Um, but to get that many two and outs in the second half um, is, is very, very good against the Sargos offense. Now, it's the same story where it's too little, too late, almost, right? And, you know, you saw the Ticats come alive in that second half a little bit, but, again, it's climbing back out of that hole that you've dug yourself, and it's just you run out of time. And you've made yourself, as you said before in the past, you've become somewhat one-dimensional in the sense that you know Taylor Powell for the majority, even though they did uh, not forget the run with James Powell, uh, it was a pass-first mentality. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just too hard to continually do that, right? Because the defense can do so many different things to defend against the pass when they're not really worried about you running the ball down after down because you know you're running out of time. And even with the defense playing like that, getting a turnover, all those two and outs, it just it eats up a lot of clock if you're trying to run that ball. So the defense teed off, and like Andy had said, that D-line was getting pressure on Powell and, uh, you know, forcing some tough throws and, and even some tough catches, which, you know, some of our receivers like Keandre Smith came down with a few of them. The discussion will continue on Tiger Cats post game. We will go down to the locker room for exclusive uh, a chat with Coach O. We will talk to our player of the game uh, presented by Hercules Tire right on our strength. Catch of the game. And then you, again, we will bring in the likes of RJ Broadhead and Andy Fantus to go round table to continue the discussion. But let us talk about the catch of the game. And it is time for the catch of the game presented by Fisherman's Friend. Fisherman's Friend, it works. That's the honest truth. Let's set up the play this way. Late fourth quarter, 5.06 remaining. Hamilton, second down and five from their own 31 yard line. Second and five, Tiger Cats up to their own 31. Taylor Powell, he's throwing deep down the left side. Keandre Smith goes up, makes the catch down inside the Toronto 40. It's a first down and a lot more presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. What a what, play. What were you saying about a comeback? <laughs> <laughs> Keandre Smith, go get it. Oh, what a nice play to go up and get that ball. Contested catch. Well, Mike Daly, I would think it's fair to say a star was born tonight. Yeah, absolutely. That that catch alone right there, to go up and high point that ball at the, at the highest point he could get it over top of the defender. That was really big to keep that momentum that the Ticats were having alive. And, I mean, you could have picked a couple of these catches from Keandre Smith for catch of the, ga or catch of the game. So for him to go up there and make a big-time play and then have, you know, a big-time game that we saw him break out it is really good for him and really good for this offense. But, again, it's, it's, you know, time and time again just a little too late. Fair to say that Keandre Smith for the first time is our performer of the game, as I said, presented by Hercules Tire, right on our strength. Great numbers today. Yeah, absolutely. Nine catches for 156 yards, right? Breakout game. His dad was actually honored by the Yargos this game, so it'll be interesting to see, and I can't wait to ask him if his dad switched over from the Yargos jersey at the beginning of the game into a tie cuts jersey after. Um, but to be able to do that on, you know, kind of a family night now and, and have Keandre break out like, you know, everybody in the entire town expects him to play. Um, really cool to see. I'm excited for the young receiver, and he's doing really, really good things. Um, and then hopefully he can help, you know, propel this Ticats team forward into the playoffs. Well, Adrian Smith was a heck of a defensive back. Interesting that 
dad <laughs> lines up in the, on defense and son doing a great job on offense as well too so we will hopefully get to talk to him a little bit later in the broadcast but let's review your car star keys to victory yeah so the first one was start fast and unfortunately did not go that way for the Ticats, right? So we had 16-3 after the first quarter, and really the first drive of the Ticats was that pick six to Wint McManus, right? Very next drive after that, it was that bomb to Brissett, that 70-yard touchdown that Chad Kelly threw. So starting fast, no, and it's the tale that we keep talking about where it's, you know, you get yourself behind and it's hard to climb out of that hole. Number two. Number two is win the turnover battle. Well, with the turnover on downs, it was uh, five to two against the Tide Cats, right? So, realistically, those turnover on downs ones are ones where you're trying to climb back in the game. You're trying to make a play. What hurts is those two interceptions that were for big time returns as well. The one for a six, and then the other one down to the three, I believe, just at inopportune times. And really, again, it goes back to that start fast. Two interceptions, then to put you in a hole is tough. 14 to 3 uh, the points uh, differential in the turnover battle and that's a real tough one there number three number three is win the return game listen i i think the tie cats did win this return game but the only reason i will say that is because there was a fumble by javon leak that allowed the tie cats to get that field goal early and get really the only points of that of that first half other than that one rouge um but the big time play that we're going to look back at on this game is when the Ticats were getting some momentum. Tyreek McAllister gets out of there and returns it down, and then it's brought back for a holding. Then the next, then the next drive is a safety, right? And it flips the ball over. So the Cats win it because yes, ultimately they did win this return game, but with a little bit of an asterisk because that return really could have blown this game open. Let's open up and go to our roundtable style. RJ Broadhead, Andy Fantus joins us. And Andy, this is one of the things I know that you generally chart for most of the game. And again, in, for the Tiger Cats, their offense just could not get going. Poor field position was a, a factor. And again, for what, again, four times the Argonauts have really dominated field position. And that leads to early points in the first half. Yeah, it's no surprise that the Argonauts have such success on the scoreboard when they win every single game, uh, the field position battle. So far this season, they have started their drives as an average of seven yards further than their opponents overall on the season coming into this game. And I don't think that number changed uh, in the other direction after this game. Ticats started within their own 15 or 20 yard line a number of times, half a dozen times, and it's just hard to win ball games like that. Well, and Andy, even you know, you you mentioned like how they they keep getting this good field position battle. Even that second half where the defense was doing so well, getting these two and outs, they didn't start any closer to their own end zone than the 40 yard line. So even though these two and outs are happening, Force is still able to punt that ball down and pin the tie cats deep, like RJ brought up at the the 9, the 20, the 15, the 10, that's just too hard to go that whole field. Yeah, and it's, it, 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 you already talked about that holding penalty on the one explosive return. When you're playing a team like Toronto on the road, there, there were just so many, so many of those kind of penalties that just came at the wrong time. The, the procedure calls, the, the, on both sides of the ball, that holding penalty, it was a 10 yard penalty, but it was really, what did we say, a 58 yard yeah. penalty of hidden yardage. And, and then it followed up with that safety on the next play. They're just hurt, put, you know, hurt, kicking themselves in the foot and, and, and hurting themselves. It's, it's hard to beat a great team uh, if you don't play discipline and, and not turn the ball over, not let alone turn the ball over for a score and down to the two yard line for another score. So um, you, you got to clean those things up if you want to have a chance to beat this Argonaut team. You know, RJ, a situation where your young quarterback, this was one of those games against a measuring stick, I guess, when you're playing a top defense like the Argonauts have and the aggressiveness that they come with. Uh, it was a tough learning lesson as well, too. The safety, the interception return for a touchdown, the ill-advised throw on third down that got picked up that he kind of threw to, to an Argo with no one in anywhere around. Yeah, it, it's, hey, it's been a, a season of learning for Taylor Powell, and I've talked to him a, a lot. And he's fine with learning, and he's fine with making mistakes. And 
he even said to me, he said, it, 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 it's weird that it's okay to make mistakes. Just learn from them. Don't make them again. And this is another game of learning for him. Let's go down to the locker room and connect with Keandre Smith. This, ex this exclusive post-game interview is presented by Access Storage. Score a touchdown with affordable storage. Access Storage. It's flexible storage solutions at a store near you. Try four weeks for free. Details at accessstorage.ca. Keandre, heck of a game out there today. Your first 100-yard game in your career comes in a fight-back sort of situation. But uh, uh, good to get, uh, I guess, get that, that, those reps and get some, get some feels on the ball there. Uh, it was nice to get a couple of hands on the ball. But we didn't come out with the win, and that's the important part. Hey, Keandre, listen, um, really cool that your dad gets honored before the game and then you have that kind of game. Listen, I want to know, your dad was obviously wearing the Argos jersey at the beginning. Did he switch jerseys while you started playing and start wearing the Thai Cats to, to, sell or to cheer you on, or how did that look? Honestly, I'm on my way out to see him. I haven't got the chance to see him yet, but uh, whether, whatever, no matter what jersey, today was about him, then the game was about me. So, honestly, I'm glad he got his moment. And then we played the game, right? So only worried about what, what, what the win. The win's all that matters here. Keandre, not much going on in the first half, but a, a bit of promise showed in the second half, able to drive the ball down the field. What what was the message in the locker room at half? Because uh, even the defense came out and, and really, it was really a tale of two halves for both offense and defense tonight. It was all about staying together and playing for the man next to you. That's all. Hey, Keandre, it's... Uh, the Argos sweep the, the season series against you. If you play them again, it would be in the in the East final. I, I know fans are curious. What, what's what's the team's attitude after this game? Uh, the Argos are a team that you're going to have to beat if you want to win the Grey Cup. And right now, they've uh, they've really had your number. Is there anything that that you, anyone on the team that doesn't think when you get that chance that you can beat them? We'll see them in the playoffs when it's knockout and the best team will go home. And the best team will stay. Thank you, Andre Smith. Thank you so much for joining us. As Thank our you for having me. All right, but for, as our performer of the game, presented by Hercules Tire, right on our strength. And, you know, obviously the young man's a little disappointed, though. But, guys, I think it's honest to say, I mean, these are monster numbers that he certainly put up. Uh, now it's been corrected in nine receptions, uh, 156 yards on 13 targets. And I think becoming more of a guy that's become reliable to whoever's quarterbacking this team. Yeah, I think he and Taylor Powell, we've seen it a lot on second downs in games previous to this, that he's relied on Keandre Smith at times, and Keandre, with his intelligence, goes to that first down marker. It, it is interesting when you look back at these four games against Toronto. Every game, Hamilton's had a 100-yard receiver, and it's never been the same guy. First time was Duke Williams. Of course, he's on the six-game injured list, then Terry Godwin, then Tim White, and now Keandre Smith. So if uh, you know he can get them all going in, in one game, maybe it'll be different. Right back to the locker room, and let's connect with the coach, Coach O, presented by Access Storage. Score a touchdown with affordable storage. Access Storage has flexible storage solutions at a store near you. Try four weeks for free. Details at accessstorage.ca. Coach O, tough loss. I mean, and the Argonauts are a good team. Now let's, let's not fool ourselves here. But you guys really made this one interesting in the second half. you got to be proud with the execution that you saw as opposed to the first half. Well, definitely. You know, I, I think I would expect that at this point, you know, like we've been through those types of things before. I felt like the the effort, the, you know, the, the, the resiliency, I really feel like that was um, apparent. Uh, at the end of the day, we play the game to win. So disappointed in that. Uh, yeah, we just got to, you know, there's lots of great things from this game. But at the end of the day, uh, we got to we got to be better when we're making timely plays consistently you know i'm proud of, of the plays to keep us in the game but you can't make you know you, you just can't make mistakes that we make against a great team like that hey oh it's uh it's daily here um listen how often do you or how will you look at the outside in so the battle with montreal right now to you know get the home playoff spot and is that a focus at all or is it just kind of next game and let the cards lay as they will yeah I, you know having done this i just know this um when you can control things 
and when you're in control of your own, you know, the future, you handle that. And so I just know this. If you win, things take care of themselves. So until it's a situation where you got to look around, um, we're not doing that. Right. We are focused on winning the football games. And so if we win there, we don't have to worry about anything. So our focus will be on our next game and moving forward. And, you know, however everything else ends up, uh, it ends up. Hey, coach, was there any consideration to get Matthew Schilt some live reps tonight in the second half? Well, you're always brainstorming ways to win, but, you know, Taylor needed to play through situations like this, and he gained valuable experience tonight. Hey, oh, it's it's RJ. Just you went for the field goal late. Uh, how, how tough uh, was that decision instead of going for it on, on third down? That was easy. Okay. Made it, made it a two-score game. 16, we're down, put us down 16. That was, that was an easy one. And if you play the Argos again, it'll be the East final. They sweep the regular season series, but um, there's only one game that matters this year, right? That's it. You know, we look forward to being back here. We got a lot of work ahead of us to, to get to that point, but uh, it's information that you gather along the journey. You know, credit them. Uh, they they played well. They made They made big plays. And, you know, it made it tough on us, but it, it'll have no bearing uh, if we end up back here uh, in the East final. Coach, was it an adjustment situation that you made at halftime that, that, that you know, sort of grounded the Argonauts offense a little bit more? Or was it, uh, was it something you guys said in the, in the coaching room? Oh, no, it's always about the player execution. You know, I was very disappointed in how we... We didn't play very well situationally uh, in the first half, and the score reflected it. You know, we, we needed to just play better in all three phases. You know, like we were taking untimely penalties, and um, it just it just we could it, we were in our own way. Let's just say that. So um, th the messaging was simple. It was just let's get out of our own way and let's let's boil this thing down to football. But words are words. You still got to go out and execute. So we executed a little bit better. Well, the focus changes to the Calgary Stampeders. Enjoy a couple days off, and I'm sure it'll be a good, tough, hard week of practice for the boys. And we look forward to uh, seeing you on game day next week. Awesome. Thanks, fellas. Coach Orlando Steinauer again, just telling it as it is, guys, on how this one happened. And, and it really did. I mean, it's fair to say it really was a, a, a tale of two halves, RJ. Absolutely. If, if you look at the final three quarters... It was 13-11 for the Argos. And we've seen it in the four games. In the first quarter, the Argonauts have dominated and almost won the game in the first quarter. You don't want to say that because there's a lot of time to go, but as it's turned out in these four games, they have such a big lead after the first quarter that it's been too tough for the Tiger Cats to come back. So that's something they're going to have to figure out, get off to a better start. We saw it against Winnipeg. They got off to a good start, and they were successful. For whatever reason, Toronto in four straight games puts up a ton of points. So, uh, again, I, I just, who cares about the regular season? Just getting the playoffs, home playoff game, still a possibility. But they got to be thinking, East Final in Toronto. We can get one win against Toronto this year. That's the only one that really matters. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be the toughest part for them, right, is they, they're going to go back into the locker room now. They're going to go back to this practice week, and, you know, in their minds they're going to be like, hey, what do we need to do correctly, right? Because you have that win against Winnipeg. You have some big-time wins this season, but then there's also a couple of games like this where you're just like, oh, man, that entire first half was a, a disaster, right? So what do, what do we have to clean up personally as players, all that kind of stuff? And it's it's a really hard conversation to have in meeting rooms and practice and to try to figure out, okay, what's going well? What isn't going well? What do we need to change? And what do we need to do the same from the second half? It's it's just a big head scratcher, right? And Andy, like, I, I don't know internally as a player, like, what do you do to help out other teammates and yourself be able to reenact the second half versus that first half? Yeah, I think it just comes down to, uh, re, you know, focusing and refocusing. It, it really does. You can't think of the big picture, what the scoreboard says, uh, how easily Toronto's been moving the ball on you, how little amount of pressure you've been getting, how much pressure they've been getting, how hard it's been for you to burn the ball. You can't think of any of that what happened. That's one of those flush it down, 
move on, look ahead. It, it takes a lot of mental toughness to do that. But um, I liked what Keandre said. You're playing for the next, the guy next to you. Just focus on the play at hand. Play for the guy next to you. Let's see what happens. And that, you know, they they made it a ball game. They were in that game. Um, it, it didn't. The score was probably closer than the game felt, to be, to be frank. But it, it, they were in the ball game. They had a chance to uh, bring it within one score late in the game. And uh, so you, you did see a response coming out of half, and that's an important characteristic uh, that we were, uh, th that we've seen a lot of of late, but we didn't see so much of earlier in the season. So that's, uh, that's going to be important moving forward. And maybe that change in the half is the changes the Tiger Cats made, because give the Argos credit, they did their homework. Stavros, Katz, and Tonus had been all over making all kinds of tackles, and they had some, some plays that, that they read what he was going to do a, a couple of times. They were prepared for Stavros, Katz, and Tonus and for Taylor Powell, who had been so consistent with his completion percentage. They had his head on a swivel in that opening half, and then Scott Milanovic and Taylor Powell and the rest of the coaching staff were able to make some adjustments, had more success in the second half. But going into the game, Argos did their homework. Let's, let's review this, and I, I don't know what all of you guys thought. I did bring it up at halftime with Mike, and, and I'm sure it maybe went across the minds of many in Tigertown. What you asked the coach there about a, a possible quarterback change, and I'm going to start to wonder as we get into the stretch drive, a home game against Calgary here coming up, is that going to become more of a possibility at this point as the QB1, the that came out of the season. We've already seen him. Archie, you're at every practice. He's throwing the ball and looking. He's walking oh, yeah. around with, without a limp. I'm not saying Bo. Matt's healthy. Taylor's had a, a grown tremendously. But it's going to be, at some point, the person that gives you the best chance to win. Who is that? <laughs> Great question. Uh, Bo is throwing. And kind of always thought this Calgary game coming up next Saturday was probably his goal date to be healthy. I don't know if he will be. Matt Schiltz is healthy. Taylor Powell still threw for 334 yards. You know, he threw for a touchdown. There were a couple interceptions in there that cost him, but statistically, it was still a, a fairly productive game. Toronto's a good team. Any quarterback, we've seen it. They're 12-1. and one. Every quarterback struggles against Toronto. Yeah, really, for me, just the two interceptions were were very poor decisions. Uh, and then the safety, of course, you gotta, that, you're going to learn from that by taking the intentional grounding. But other than that, the lack of production the first half, to me, was not on Taylor Powell other, other than that one interception for the touchdown. Uh, so uh, we talked about, oh, should we bring in Matthew Schultz maybe just for a spark, maybe to give him some live reps. Um, but... Uh, as the game went on, you're thinking, oh, well, the Tigers have a chance with Taylor Powell in the game, so that was probably a good move to keep him in. Yeah, I think um, if this game had went a little bit differently and the Cats came out on top, there'd be no question that it'd be Taylor Powell moving forward. Um, once Bo Levi Mitchell gets healthy, then it'll be a, a harder conversation because you brought him in for a specific reason, and that was to win a great cup. So... I don't know, because Taylor Powell has been playing so well, and like Coach O said, you got to get him through adversity because that's only going to grow him in his own game. But again, with the uh, the inexperience that you saw early on with that interception, especially the second one, right, where it's uh, that could be an easy throw away or, or at least just take a sack and, and don't give that ball back to the Argos, um, it's going to definitely be a conversation piece in that coach's room. And, you know, I think both have a good a good story for why they should start between Bo or between Taylor. Well, folks, the storylines will be running wild this week, but the fact that the Montreal Alouettes defeated the Calgary Stampeders in their own barn, Calgary are coming here on an absolute mission to try and get themselves back into the playoff conversation in the West, maybe even the crossover. Hamilton Tiger Cats have their own work to do. So we're going to be, it's going to be a, a real interesting, tough week of practice for these guys because we're getting closer and closer to that money time in the Canadian Football League. Final score, Toronto Argonauts 29, Hamilton Tiger Cats 14. Thank you so much for listening, Tiger Town. For Mike Daly, RJ, 
Andy, the fine hands that put this this broadcast together, whether they speak or not. And, of course, from everyone at the Ticats Audio Network. We will be back a week from tonight. Boy, it's going to be a big one. Tiger Cats pregame presented by Greenworks as the home team hosts the Calgary Stampeders. Our broadcast starts at 6 o'clock. We're streaming live at listen.ticats.ca and across the Ticats Audio Network. Good night, everyone.